CSET Biology, the cover page presents Biology Kids. This is the place where the brightest minds can be found. Today we're going to be looking at photosynthesis. And tell me boys and girls, do you know what's photosynthesis? We're going to find that out in this lesson. But let us start with what are plants? Pause the video. Plants are autotrophic organisms. What are autotrophic organisms? Write it in your books. Organisms that make their own food. Did you know that? All organisms that make their own food are called autotrophs. What name is given to the process by which plants make their own food? We are autotroph, but what's that name? Write it in your book there for me, and then tell me if you got the correct answer. All right? Do hope that you're writing. The answer will come up in a bit. Did you get it correct? The answer is photosynthesis. If you got it correct, give yourself a big round of applause. You are indeed doing well. Let us look a little closer at the plant. Well, getting food for the plant is not as easy as it is for you. You can collect parts of a plant for food or your parents will cook you some food. Can you relate to that? You need something to eat and wow, you just go outside and you get yourself an, an orange, a piece of cane, an apple, that type of a thing. Or your parents might very well just cook you your favorite stew. But a plant, they are not able to do that. Plants have no one to go to for food. And they cannot cook like mom. Your mom is a great cook, I'm sure. So they use light energy from the sun, water, nutrient from the soil, and carbon dioxide from the air to make their food. This is like cooking up a delicious stew for the plant. I'm sure you can relate to a delicious stew because I'm sure you've had some of mom's favorite stew. Now, this is your quiz. Can you believe it? We are at quiz already. Now, list of things plants use to make their food. Remember, it's right in the video clip just before here. So try and then you can go back and see if you can fetch your answer. Write it in your books. I'll give you the answer in a few. Are you writing? Are you writing? How many you got correct? All right, the answer is on screen now. Light energy from the sun. Who yeah? Water and mineral from the soil. Beautiful. And the third, carbon dioxide, which comes from the air. Now, let's look a little deep point of photosynthesis. What is really needed for photosynthesis? Are those the only things? No. Let's look at what else need to be added to the list. Sunlight, water, carbon dioxide. And did you know plants also use chlorophyll to trap the light energy from the sun? The plant will use those needed items to carry out photosynthesis. And photosynthesis, remember, is just to make its own food. Now, the process of photosynthesis can be summarized in an equation. And that equation is right below on your screen. It's not there as yet. Just pay attention to the video and I'm sure it will pop up right in time. Carbon dioxide. The plant is going to use a carbon dioxide with some water and of course the chlorophyll will capture that sunlight and then it's going to put it in one big mix. And guess what is going to be the result? Tell me boys and girls, what's going to be the result? So we're going to be adding carbon dioxide plus water, chlorophyll will capture that sunlight and then we're going to have something being produced. What is being produced? Can you see it on the screen? Tell me, did you say glucose? You are correct. Glucose and oxygen. Give yourselves a round of applause. You probably want to pause this video so that you can study for your test. Your test comes up. Now, what is needed for photosynthesis? Now, give me that new list. 
are the things that are actually needed for photosynthesis. You saw them all in the equation just now. Do you have sunlight? Yes, you're correct. Water? Yes, you're correct. Let's go along. Let's go along. Carbon dioxide, I'm sure you have it in your books. Chlorophyll, that is the big thing there. So we have it, sunlight, water, carbon dioxide, and chlorophyll are all needed for the process of photosynthesis. Now, can you write that equation for photosynthesis? Carbon dioxide, water, light energy, which is captured by the chlorophyll, which will produce glucose and oxygen. Guys, you are learning. Let's, let's get back to the lesson. Parts of the equation. Now, the equation is made up of several parts. I want to ensure that we know all parts. So, the first part is the raw material, which pretty much is made up of the water and carbon dioxide. Then, we have the area with the arrow, which is pretty much a condition, which is made up of sunlight and chlorophyll. And then, the last part there is going to be the product, which is glucose and oxygen. Here it is nice and labeled on your screen, and you want to ensure that you know these for your next quiz. Your teacher is definitely going to be asking you about the parts of the equation, raw material, condition, and product. Let's look at it again. Raw material, condition, and product. So we have raw material, and this is like the food uh, to be cooked. Condition is like the pot on the fire needed for the food and of course we're going to be looking now at the that was a good guess the product product is like the end product of cooking if you were cooking chicken then the end product there probably would have been fried chicken stew chicken barbecue chicken you tell me your favorite chicken that you'd be cooking and what the end product would have been so here we have raw material condition product these are the main parts of your reaction for photosynthesis that's the equation there for photosynthesis now the chlorophyll is found only in plant cell and it is needed to track the light energy from the sun always remember what the chlorophyll is needed for here we go glucose is pretty much a food produced by plants and this glucose is used by the plants and other organisms Look at the oxygen, another product from photosynthesis. And this is used for respiration and combustion. I want you to do this research and tell us what is respiration and what is combustion. Then we're back to the raw material. Carbon dioxide pretty much combines with water to make glucose and oxygen. Sunlight. Sunlight provides the energy for the reaction. And the reaction is pretty much a process to take place. So sunlight is very, very important for that. And we're looking a little closer at the process of photosynthesis. How does the plant get all its raw material? You didn't take them to the plant? Oh wow, carbon dioxide enters the plant through tiny openings on the leaf called stomata. And singular, we say stoma. The process is made possible by diffusion. And that's another big word that you're going to need to research. My young science researcher say I am a biology kid. Great. You are doing well. Now, we're going to be looking now at how the plant gets water. Water and minerals are taken by the root and transported to various parts of the plant. The process is made possible by another word, osmosis. And you can go and do the research and tell us in the comment and tell your teacher what is osmosis. I'm sure you're a bright kid and of course you understand how to do a research and present your research findings. Now let's look at something else. Now light energy captured by the chlorophyll and the chlorophyll is this green pigment in the plant. It's like a uh, ink in the plant, like the ink in your pen, it's like the ink in the plant is green. And of course, it is found in a part of the cell we call the chloroplast. Now, the oxygen is given off as a product of photosynthesis. And if you look at the animation there, the water is coming from the soil. And of course, oxygen being given off by the plant. Now, the oxygen diffuses out of the leaf through the stomata and is used for 
respiration and combustion what's using the oxygen for respiration is it the fire or is it the cattle mm, i wonder which one it is is it the cattle that's using the oxygen for respiration or the fire mm, let me guess that ah uh, combustion produces more heat energy respiration produces less heat energy so i will think let me see it is the kettle that is using the oxygen for respiration and the fire oxygen for combustion now look at this it has changed now carbon dioxide from the air diffuses into the leaf through the stomata to make glucose so now the animal is giving off carbon dioxide, the fire is giving off carbon dioxide, the plant is taking this up, and guess what's been made? Glucose for you and I. Now this takes us pretty much to something rather interesting. Can you tell me what it is, boys and girls? We want to find out what happens to the product of photosynthesis. Remember, the product is the last part of the equation now the oxygen we saw just now is used for respiration and combustion while the glucose is used by the plant as food and some of the glucose is stored as starch in the root stem leaves seed and even in some fruits can you relate to this do you know any stem leaf or root now let's look at this this is a, an experiment for you boys and girls we're going to be testing the leaf to find out if it stores starch and you're going to be reading on the screen this leaf is a variegated leaf meaning that it has chlorophyll and some parts has no chlorophyll so what we're going to be doing we're going to be placing this leaf at sea in some boiling water just to stop the reaction and then we're going to be immersing this leaf or dipping this leaf place this leaf in some alcohol to remove the chlorophyll now the chlorophyll will be removed and of course the leaf is going to feel a little crispy after being uh, removed from the ethanol or alcohol as we call it there in d and again we will have to place this leaf in some water so that it becomes all moist and soft again and that happens there at E and then while it becomes soft and pretty much moist we're going to lay this leaf out nicely on a white tile as you're seeing on your screen and then we are going to be adding the reagent called iodine now when iodine is added to the leaf you will observe that the color would have changed from green to what we refer to as blue black no no it's not black it is what we refer to in science as blue black but you would have observed that the white hair of the leaf did not change because the white hair of the leaf has no starch however the hair that contains starch changed pretty much to blue black while the white hair took the color of the iodine which is of course red brown so now we know that a positive test for starch using iodine is always going to be blue black your answer is always going to be blue black i think you have been awesome we're going to leave today by saying i am a biologic kid thank you very much for joining me today kids and i'm going to be seeing you in my next episode where we are going to be looking at the purposes of a plant in the environment until next time make sure that you're studying and taking good care of yourself remember to like share and subscribe see you in our next episode